What is good, everybody? Welcome to the MPB Gaming Channel. Today, we've got another episode of the WMU Football Dynasty here on College Football Revamped. And if you are new to the channel, please, please help me out. Drop a like, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another episode of the WMU Football Dynasty, as well as plenty of the other additional content that I have planned. We would love to have you aboard because we've got plenty of space on the bandwagon. And speaking of bandwagons you should hop on, the WMU Broncos are 2-0. And hopping into our game against the Pitt Panthers at 0-1 in Heinz Field. Believe it or not, despite our overall differential, Lee Corso is picking the 2-0 Broncos. So do you think we've made a statement in these first two weeks or what? That being said, it's going to take a lot to beat the Kenny Pickett-led Panthers. And I wouldn't say that I'm quite as confident as Lee Corso over here, but I still have a certain amount of confidence that these boys can put another win together. Michigan's already into the top 25 after losing to us in week one. So whatever that victory they had in the last week or so was pretty convincing, I guess. I'm sure all of you college football heads are very familiar with Kenny Pickett, Heisman finalist. And we will certainly have our hands full with him. But leading the way for the Broncos, we've got Caleb Ellaby, who so far has 343 passing yards on the season, three touchdowns and two picks. Sean Tyler has been the story of this Broncos offense thus far. Coming off a game with 130 yards from scrimmage last week. I'm assuming he also leads the Broncos in all-purpose touchdowns. He has to. And of course, Sky Moore is our leading receiver. There's no surprise there. We're going to continue to try to get him going. He had six catches for 105 yards in that win over San Jose State last week. As you can see, it is no small task to beat this Pittsburgh team. Just look at the overall differential here. We got 90 to 81, 88 to 81, and 93 to 82 defensively. We're going to have to play a very sharp game all four quarters, just like that Michigan game week one. And without further ado, let's get into the third game of the season for these Broncos. I hope you all are as excited as I am. And as we look at the top players, Kenny Pickett is injured. So that is a curveball. I'm not sure who their backup quarterback is. And doing some further research, it is a knee cartilage tear, which will force him to miss at least three weeks. So he is not going to be on the field for this one. That changes things. We are no longer playing a Heisman finalist at quarterback. There will definitely be a follow-up there. Broncos are fired up to be in Heinz Field today, playing in an NFL stadium, but not an NFL team, thankfully. No Kenny Pickett at quarterback which is huge as we see number 12. I'm gonna have to figure out who the heck that is. But the Broncos are looking to go to three and O on the season, halfway towards bowl eligibility. This could be a huge one. And welcome in to Heinz Field, ladies and gentlemen, as the Western Michigan Broncos prepare to take on the Pitt Panthers. We are now on the field for the coin toss. Tails never fails, please. Aha, look at that. Is that three straight coin tosses we won? I'm not sure actually. Also, I think I'm going to tweak my camera here real quick. Please let me know if you have any preferences on my setup here, whether that's with the video or the audio. I'm still working all this out. I don't pretend to have it figured out. And a tradition that we are starting to build here in this series is to check out the other team's roster before the game, do a little bit of pregame scouting, as we're not going to have to face Kenny Pickett, which is a huge plus, as he's looking at a 94 overall right now with some pretty crazy quarterback attributes, but we're not going to have to worry about him at all today. Instead, we're going to be worrying about Nick Patty. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's how I'm going to be pronouncing it for the game. A redshirt junior with 74 speed, nothing too crazy, but some pretty good agility, good acceleration. His awareness is fine. His stiff arm and spin move and juke move also aren't bad either. It looks like he's kind of mobile. His throwing attributes, checking at 87 throw power, 77 throw accuracy, not terrifying. I think we'll be able to take care of this guy for sure. Israel Abanikanda, the halfback. What a name that is, a sophomore at 86 overall. He's got some future potential there. 89 speed, 92 agility, 92 acceleration. Looks like he has some burst in him. His spin move, juke move, pretty solid. Carrying's decent. Vincent Davis checks in at an 86 overall, a junior. Pretty similar archetype, honestly. I just checked out a few of their ratings. A little bit more of a power back. Nothing too crazy in their running back room, but definitely some playmakers. Luckily for us, we cannot edit the depth chart. And Jordan Addison, who was their leading receiver by far in real life this year, is listed at third. I'm assuming they're going to have a ton of three receiver looks, so he'll still be on the field plenty. But in two receiver sets, we're not even going to have to worry about Jordan Addison, which could be huge for us. In real life, though, he had a massive season in the 2021 through 2022 college football year with 1,593 receiving yards and 17 touchdowns. I am glad that he's not slotted in at that number one spot, but that also means that our third string corner is going to have quite the day. Jordan Addison checks in with 91 catching, 89 spectacular catch, 89 catch in traffic, 89 route running. 
The 75 jumping isn't too impressive, but the rest of those numbers are definitely special. The two receivers in front of him have pretty decent receiver attributes as well, but nothing too special. Just some solid receivers all around. Lucas Kroll has a 91 overall, a redshirt senior. He's got 90 awareness and some pretty decent attributes for after the catch. And then a 90 catch rating as well. He'll be special. Gotta look out for him. Number seven. The offensive line's pretty beefy. Look at these overalls, at least in terms of their blocking attributes here. The left tackle, 90, 91, 91. 88, 88, 88. 79 across the board, 84 plus across the board, 87 plus across the board. They've definitely got some really powerful linemen on this roster, highlighted by the senior Carter Warren, a 90 overall left tackle. Our defensive line will definitely have their hands full, and their defensive line is pretty dang solid as well, a 93 overall. Habakkuk Baldonado, don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Deslin Alexander. They've got some fire names on this roster. Some very complicated ones, too. That'll be fun to narrate. But some really good overalls, too. As a D-tackle, whoa, was a 95 overall. As a sophomore. I looked at the rest of the defense, but I'll just give you the quick highlights real quick. Going back to their defensive line, Baldonado led the team in sacks in real life this past season, and he's checking in with a 93 overall. Their right end, 91 overall. Their D tackle, 95, and an 88 is their backup in case they use a 4-3. And their linebacker position is also juiced. A 98 left outside linebacker, a 93 middle linebacker, and a right outside linebacker who checks in at an 89 overall. Their middle linebacker, by the way, has 93 tackle. And then their D backs are pretty solid too. They've got two 89 corners one with a lot more speed than the other but the one that lacks in speed makes up for it in coverage skills check this guy out 98 man 99 zone coverage that's Damari Mathis what a crazy corner prospect again look at this 98 man coverage 99 zone coverage 99 press and then their backup corner has 95, 99, and 96, respectively. So it is going to be tough to throw on those two guys, that is for sure. The only chance we really have to routinely beat Damari Mathis here is to just burn him with Sky Moore, since his speed is not too stellar at an 81. But his speed is literally his only weakness as a corner. So I'm even surprised he's as low as an 89. But I will not be forgetting about his coverage skills anytime soon. Their free safety checks in at an 81 overall. Nothing too special there. But their strong safety, Brandon Hill, as a sophomore, is a 93 overall. This defense could progress to be an insane defense next year in game. And for those interested, this sophomore safety has 95 zone coverage, so he'll be covering it up top as well. And their free safety only checks in at a 76 and 80, though. Their kicker is pretty stellar, 87 are all, and so is their punter. And that will conclude the little pre-game scouting session here. And let's get back rolling into the game. Look at that billboard with the ketchup bottle. It's Heinz Field. You know it is. And it is time for some more Bronco football. we got a packed house here in Pittsburgh. It almost seems more daunting than the big house somehow. But I'm very excited to play in this venue. I had a long time Pitt Panthers dynasty in an old NCAA. But for now, it is time to kick off another game for Bronco football. And it is a touchback. As the Bronco defense will march onto the field to see what we can do about the Pitt Panthers and their backup quarterback. And here we go. Third game of the season here. And we're already sending another blitz. Oh, that did not work out how I wanted it to. And the first and 10 play goes for eight yards there for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Second and two for this Bronco defense. Uh, I do not like Ryan Selig here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to use him just to make sure he doesn't get completely torched. Here come the Pitt Panthers and already here's a play without Addison on the field. I mean, I'm not complaining, but that does not add to the realism as the Broncos swarm there for a gain of zero there on first and 10. This time we got Coleman on Addison, but it's another handoff here as Corbin Moment, a terrible tackling animation, but I'll take it. And that's going to bring up a third and nine here early for the Pitt Panthers. Let's see what their play call is. I'm very content here with letting their backup try to decipher this zone defense as Fayad sheds a block but cannot get there after that. Darius Jackson, though, wraps up a fantastic tackle there. He could have broken that guy on a first down, but instead, we've got a fourth and four coming up. The Broncos defense stepping up early once again. I cannot emphasize enough how impressed I've been with this Broncos defense. Let me tell you right now, they were not this electric in real life this season. It was uh, pretty hard to stop some offenses in the MAC at, at points this year. But here comes a punt return for Sky Moore. Let's see what we can do here. He's got some open field. Can that acceleration get around the corner? Yes, it can. A nice little return there as he breaks a tackle. And a return of 21 yards on the punt there. We will take that. And we will now get our first look at Caleb Ellaby and the WMU Broncos offense here. As a first and 10 from about the 34-yard line. 33-yard line after that nice Sky Moore return. 
Here comes a counter. Terrible blocking there. Wow. There was no hope from that play from the beginning. That was doomed. As we see Sean Tyler's rushing stats on the season so far, he has been electric for this Broncos offense. He's been carrying the load heavily so far. We'll have to stay tuned to see if we have another explosive Sean Tyler game on our hands. Uh, what are we looking for here? I don't hate that route with Crooms. Otherwise, I might dump it off to Sherwin here. That is not what I intended it to be. Wow. Wow. I thought I was going to be able to time that throw perfectly to have it like an over-the-shoulder, kind of drop-in-the-bucket kind of pass. That is not what it ended up being whatsoever. We've got a third and ten coming up here. Honestly, we're lucky that just wasn't intercepted. I was tempted to almost fold and do a halfback screen and just see what we could get there. But I'm going to play it aggressive here. I'm going to try to see if Krooms is going to be open on this curl. Otherwise, I'm going to try to go deep here, honestly. He is completely covered. That leaves Bryce Nunley going deep. Cannot make the catch. I tried to switch over to him. It is incomplete, and it's going to be a quick, quick three and out here for the Broncos. And here comes Mahalik out to punt on this fourth and ten. Goes deep, and our coverage team is just nowhere. Getting pounded by this Pitt Panthers team, I guess. So a pretty solid return because of that. As we come out here with an empty backfield. And a slide after three yards for the Panthers there. Second and seven coming up. Another blitz being drawn up here by Lou Esposito. I don't like Fayad in coverage though. I'm just going to use her in myself. Because I don't trust CPU here with Fayad. Is that ends up paying off because Fayad has the angle but cannot get there. A nice block picked up there by number six. First and 10 from Bronco territory for the Pittsburgh Panthers coming up right here. Usering Fayad here. Cannot shed that block. And number 12 has got an edge. He's going to gain nine yards there. That's Nick Patty. Got to remember that name. It's not Kenny Pickett. Thought it'd be easier to remember their quarterback this week. We're going to start spying number 12 a little bit. The CPU just loves to go for some QB uh, scrambles in dire situations. And a first downfield pass there. Thankfully, is dropped. Here we go. Third and one coming up for the Panthers. Fayad in the backfield, completely whiffed on it. But thankfully, Theron Coleman is right there and makes a tackle for loss. Fourth and two coming up. Definitely need to get better at defending that read option. As they're going to come out here on fourth and two, and they're going for it. We are bringing some heat here. Hope this is not a quick pass. Lovely in the backfield, and he makes the tackle on a fourth and two. The corner blitz. What a fantastic play there by the Broncos early as we force a turnover on downs. I was worried he was going to truck him right there and get that first down. But a fantastic job of wrapping up there by Lovely. And the Broncos are going to get the ball back. Here we go. First and 10 for the Broncos. Caleb Bellby has some space. Thought I might be able to juke to the outside there, but I could not. 20-yard gain nonetheless for Caleb Bellby and a fresh set of downs for the Broncos. First and 10 coming up here for the Broncos. A handoff to Tyler. Goes for only three yards. Second and seven coming up. I really did not think that the Broncos defense would be the difference maker this far into the season up to this point. But they have been. They've been phenomenal. And the Broncos offense now have to step up and make some plates of their own. As we're going to go for the halfback screen here to Tyler. He's got somebody in pursuit. And he's going to get there. A loss of two. Brings up a third and ten for the Broncos. A big third down. Broncos are going to come out in four verticals here. This is the place in the field where we might consider going for it on fourth down. Depending on what this play ends up resulting in. But as of now, let's see what Caleb Velibe can do here. Scrambling to the outside. Can he get it to Tyler? He cannot. Fantastic blitz there by the Panthers. And they get to Ellaby before he can make a good throw. Fourth and ten and decision time coming up here for the offense. Would much rather be able to pin them back at least a little bit. Here is hoping that this ball does not go back in the end zone or out of bounds before the 20. I think it's going to do one of those things. Maybe not, though. That ended up being a pretty solid punt. I don't know where they're going to down that. But that might have worked out. It looks like that ball went out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So that could be big. Let's see if we can capitalize on that poor field position for them. Yes, and it did. Okay. And they're going empty. All right. This could be interesting. Can Fayad get there? Fayad, oh! I thought that was a fumble for half a second. What a rush there by Fayad. That could have been massive. That could have been either two points or a fumble and a touchdown. Instead, 
the Panthers get the benefit of an incomplete pass in a second and 10 coming up. I like that look with pressure though, so we're going to bring some more here. They're going to have somebody in the backfield this time. I'm going to be blitzing with Lovely, who's already made a big play today and gets picked up immediately as soon as I user him. Works out though. A loss of three as a fantastic tackle for loss there by Corvin Moment. Third and 13 from their own five yard line for the Pitt Panthers here. See what the Broncos can do. I don't know why I'm hyping up the crowd there. Do we have the position? And we do. We limit him to seven yards there and a fourth and six coming up. Another stop by the Broncos. That's why we punted there. This Broncos defense is no joke so far. Got the potential for a big return from Sky Moore here if he can get some blocks. Are they going to punt it before the end of this quarter, though? They do, with one second left. I wouldn't have done that. But let's see what happens. Sky Moore on the return. Can he get the edge again? No, he cannot. But that's fine. Ten yards, and the Broncos are going to start in the Pitt Panthers territory to start the second quarter. Zero to zero at the end of the first. We'll take that. Like I said in the Michigan game, we're not in the Big Ten yet. But we know how to play Big Ten football, which is a good sign. Pat Narduzzi, the head coach of the Pitt Panthers, has got to be frustrated so far. Probably similarly to the way he was frustrated at this point, the first time these two teams played each other. As I've got a scoreboard glitch right now, not ideal. Thankfully, I know it is a first and ten. We're going to get a halfback screen here, look. And Sean Tyler's got some space. Can he beat this guy on the edge? Yes, he can. He's going to try to cut back there. Did not quite work out. But a first and 10 coming up for the Broncos. A gain of 12 as the scoreboard is fixed. Beautiful. Caleb Ellaby, 2 for 5 for 10 yards so far. Not elite quarterback numbers, to say the least. Hopefully we're going to get a good look here on the PA power O, though. Borski and Moore definitely going for deep. But if Crooms is open across the middle, might have to find him too. Let's see what we can get. Borski is wide open, going to launch that to him. And a big game by the big tight end as Borski marches all the way down to the one-yard line, dragging a defender for a 34-yard gain, a huge play, and a first and goal coming up for the Broncos. What a play by Brett Borski. That LLB to Borski connection is starting to blossom. We're going to go for the halfback toss here to Sean Tyler. Let's see if we can get the edge. Pick up that block. Oh, what a hesitation there. Didn't really matter. We just lost four yards there. We're going to have to work from about the five-yard line now. Only real perk of that big loss is we open up the playbook a little bit more. And with that being said, we're in shotgun here. We're second and goal. I think I'm going to change this Nunley route to a drag. Maybe try to get Sam Bucci um, to go left. Make it a natural kind of pick play. See if Nunley's open here for six. Looks like he is. Can he turn inside? Come on, get in there. Oh, <laughs> it looks like we're about half an inch away here. What's the play call from third and goal from an inch away? Conventional wisdom says QB sneak, but that's no fun. Let's try maybe this wide receiver mid screen. I know uh, their star corner has got some really good press, so this could be disastrous. Is it too disastrous? I feel like they're anticipating a run here, though, so it might work out. I'm pulling the trigger. Let's do it. Looking for more here. And Sky Moore gets it! The easiest touchdown he'll ever have. A zero yard touchdown reception, but the Broncos take the lead. 6 0 here in Heinz Field. Elevate to Sky Moore. That connection continues to grow. And a touchdown for the Broncos, who are an extra point away from making a 7 0 game. As you see all those national championship trophies behind there for the Pittsburgh Panthers. I know they had a storied history a long time ago. Coach Perez on the sideline hyping up Sky Moore there. As he should, because Sky Moore continues to make plays, and the Broncos are up 7-0 again in a game that they probably shouldn't be leading. The Pitt Panthers come back out here, first and 10, down 7 now. We also get the ball at half, don't forget that, that's huge. But let's see what the Pitt Panthers offense is looking like here. A nice little tackle there. Second and 8, coming up here for the Panthers. What does this look as a motion? Holly gets in the backfield, but to no avail. Doesn't matter. A loss of four. A huge play there by the Broncos. It's Ryan Selig who's credited with the tackle for loss there. I think he's made both tackles on this drive so far. And a third and 12 coming up for the Pitt Panthers. Another huge third down coming up early in this one. Usering Andre Carter here. Can I get that push? No, I cannot. Should not have switched there. Honestly put myself in a bad position. If he had broken one more tackle, he could have had a huge gain. Nevertheless, it is a gain of 11 when they needed 12. Corvin moment with a big tackle there, and it is another huge stop by this Broncos defense. Another opportunity for Sky Moore to return a kick as well. 
Let's see what he can do with this. Ball teeters towards the sideline, and he gets blown up for a return of one yard. Let's not risk him getting hurt. Right now, as you can see, the offensive production. Caleb Elby has 69 total yards. Nice. While the whole rest of the team has negative one. That's not great. Coming out here for a first and ten. Going to reroute uh, Sky Moore here real quick. Give him a nice hot route. He's going to go deep here. Where are we going otherwise? I don't know. Let's see how this works. Doesn't matter. Because if this is a good thrown ball. Oh, Sky Moore couldn't get there. As I accidentally just did no huddle. Did not mean to do that. Um, but I don't want to burn a timeout already. Read option here. It's going to be a keeper for Ellaby. And we got a flag right off the bat. What is that? If it's holding, that this play was just no good from the beginning. Is that offside on the defense? Oh, that's a glitch. Oh, that's a glitch. But, I mean, I'll take it. That kind of just erases the accidental hurry-up offense that I did. Okay. Well, second and five coming up. Cool. As I was saying about that last play, though, Caleb Ellaby does not have that throw power necessary to make those deep throws routinely. That is something we need to keep in mind when we're looking for a new quarterback on the recruiting board. We need somebody who can put some air under that football because Sky Moore had that corner beat. That was a touchdown if it is a deep throw on the money. We're going for a nice halfback toss here. This looks like a pretty good formation to try it out in. Second and five here for Tyler. Can he pick up a block? No, he cannot. Sky Moore decided to run downfield for some reason on a run. Okay. Third and seven coming up for the Broncos. So far, the Broncos are one for three today on third downs. Let's see if we can change our luck here a little bit. I'm going to go for Nunley right away. But if it's not looking like that's going to be open, I'm going for Crooms here. Oh, Nunley. Perfectly ran route. Nice catch and a gain of 13 yards for the Broncos. First and 10 as we move the chains. This might end up being Ladarius Jefferson's first touch of the game. Need to get him involved a little earlier, I think. But, I mean, do we really need to when Sean Tyler's been as explosive as he is? Either way, let's try out this triple option look here. Oh, he's got the edge. And it is going to Jefferson after all. As he makes a man miss. I think he got the first down, so it doesn't really matter. But some fancy footwork there by the big guy. Quickly back up to the line and a first and ten coming up here. It's going to be another halfback screen here for Tyler. This one's pretty well covered. But I'm just going <laughs> to dump it off to him. Really, I should have thrown it away there. Was scared of getting sacked or doing something stupid. I don't know. Don't have any really good excuses there. A loss of four. Could have been a lot worse, honestly. Second and 14 coming up. I'm still kind of milking the clock because I don't want Pittsburgh to get the ball back here before half. I want this to be the last possession if we can make that happen. And I want to score a touchdown here. So I want to take my sweet time a little bit. Especially since we still have three timeouts. In the meantime, though, who are we looking for here? This might be a Corey Crooms type of play. Or Sean Tyler out of the backfield, honestly, if that's not looking good. I think... Oh, and it's a sack. Took way too long deciding. Our line gave us plenty of time to make a throw there. There was nothing really open downfield, though. And a third and 24 coming up for the Broncos. Yikes. Now we really might want to think about draining this clock so they can't score. The high football IQ thing to do here might be to run the ball and force Pitt to take a timeout. But we like taking risks as a WMU Bronco alum. So we're going deep for Sky Moore here. I know this is on that 98-99 coverage corner. But Sky Moore is different. And he is wide open. And we convert a third and 24. A gain of 29 to number 24 on a third and 24. And the Broncos move the chain and get out of bounds. Wow, what a massive play on a third and forever there. Again, I was just talking about thinking about Pitt getting the ball back and scoring. But disregard that because we are at about the 35-yard line and we are in business. Three timeouts remaining as well as Elby's just going to have to scramble here. Nice pickup on the block there by our lineman. Can we get out of bounds? Yes, we can. And a gain of 15 for Caleb Elby. Look at that mobility. Fantastic pickup here by our lineman. Look at that. Not exactly sure who that was. I'd have to double check. But a fantastic pickup. 15-yard gain here for the Broncos. And a first and 10 as we continue to move the football. Currently, we have a 7-2 first down edge on Pittsburgh. That shows you how much we've been moving the football and how little they have. What am I even looking for here? Sky Moore is not on the field. Was he on the field the last time? Is he banged up right now? That's not great. Um, might have to just throw this away, but going for Crooms, in theory. Nope, going for Tyler now. 
Can he get something there? And he can, okay. Gain of five. A lot of time comes off the clock there, though. And we still have three timeouts. Don't think we're even going to be able to mathematically use all three before the end of the half. In hindsight, I should have just gone down and called a timeout immediately if I wanted to preserve a little bit more time. But you know what? We can't think about that right now. We need to think about six. So I'm going to make Nunley do a slant across the middle. But Sky Moore, if he's a one-on-one -on -one here, this curl could be money to set us up for one more shot for the end zone. Let's see what we can get. He is not. So I'm just taking this with LB up the middle. Sliding. And I think we're going to get one shot at the end zone. And we're going to have to kick a field goal. The game is telling us to kick a field goal. Which to me says we could regret taking a shot at the end zone here. But you can't live with regrets in college football. You can only live with possibilities. We have the possibility to get six right here. But we're not going to turn that down. So it is going to be a quick, quick throw to the end zone. Um, except none of the plays they're giving me, of course, are actually quick throws to the end zone. All right, motion Tyler back out of the backfield. We're just going quickly for the end zone here. And if there's nothing, we're trying to kick this field goal. Um, did I get that in time? No. Incomplete. Could have been an interception. But it wasn't. And we're going to kick a field goal here and try to go up 10-0 going into halftime. Thank goodness that ball was just swatted down. Or we could be staring at just a 7-0 lead going into halftime. But that is not the case. We're going up 10 to nothing in Heinz Field. Going into half against these Panthers as we get a studio update. Oh, a top five matchup, Texas A&M and Alabama. Looks like it's a good one too. We'll definitely keep tabs on that one throughout the game. Bryce Young, four for four, 90 yards and touchdown. Maybe he's gonna win the Heisman again in this simulation. But once again, going into half, up 10 nothing. Very, very pleased with that. Some great stops there as we see that tackle for loss on the fourth down for Lovely. That ended up being a huge change in momentum, that play right there. And there's the Sky Moore touchdown from earlier in the game, which was the easiest of his life. And then we got that field goal at the very end of the half to go up 10-0. And the Broncos are getting the football back to start. Can we go up 17-0 in Heinz Field? I think so. Let's see if we can make it a reality. We've pretty much tripled their passing yards. We've doubled their rushing yards, essentially, but also zero turnovers across the board, and that's a very important stat. But for now, the Broncos offense is going to get the ball first, and Sky Moore is going to get the ball first, actually. So maybe the offense doesn't even have to see the field if we can get a good return here. Can Sky Moore house this? No. Caleb Elby is red hot coming out of half, and Sky Moore is getting there. So we might look for a Elby to Moore connection here, but otherwise this, PA, this play action, pardon me, Usually is money for Borski, and it is wide open for Borski, who makes a terrific catch. A gain of 22 yards and a first and 10 coming up for the Broncos. No review on that last play, so it's officially a catch. And a first and 10 coming up here. Another triple option look. And it's going to go to Jefferson again. Second time he's gotten it on this play. And a nice stiff arm and dragging defenders for a gain of 12 for Ladarius Jefferson there. He's got two rushes for 23 yards early and a first and 10 for the Broncos. As we continue to move the football, we're going to go for a play action boot here. If Skymore is open deep, we're always going to look for him first. Otherwise, this might go to Crooms across the middle or even Borski if he can get open deep. Let's see. Oh, well, it's not working out the way I wanted it to. Can LB evade this defender? And yes, he can. And look at that. A gain of 10. Caleb LB playing like Michael Vick out here right now. He's got five rushes for 46 yards so far. Sheesh. Even though LB is red hot and is begging me not to run, let's continue to pound it. Hand it off to Tyler up the middle here. Can he get a block? Gets flattened a little bit, but gains four yards. Second and six coming up. Going to try to go for this triple option look now. Let's see if anything comes from it. Some good defense there by Pitt. Oh, honestly, LB should have kept that. Might have been able to pick a first down there. Did not know if the Panthers would have a corner on the edge. It looked like they did. And he came down and made a great play on that run right there. So a third down coming up here for the Broncos. Third and three. This is another huge play here because if Pittsburgh can hold us to a field goal, it stays a two-possession game. We'd love to extend it to a three-possession game with a touchdown. But let's see what we can do here on this third and three out of the shotgun. Oh, and our receivers clashed. And Corey Crooms did not have that separation than I thought he would because of that. Another play we are lucky that wasn't intercepted. And we're going to have to line up for what is a long field goal for our kicking situation. Not so much for the kick power, but for the accuracy that we know is at what? Like a 68? 
something crazy low. Um, so, fingers crossed, everybody, as we try to extend this to a 13-point lead. The wind is also blowing slightly to the left, 5 miles per hour, it looks like. Let's see if we can get this kick off. It is up and good by Caps. No cap makes the field goal to make it a 13-point lead for the WMU Broncos. We get another studio update, and it is that Bama-Texas A&M game. 21-7, looks like the Crimson Tide is going to pull away a little bit. Bryce Young, electric so far in that first quarter. I got my money on Bama for sure, but I've seen crazier comebacks in studio updates. So far, this defense has been stifling as we come out after another touchback. The Panthers are going to start at their 25-yard line once again. Here comes Patty, who steps up nicely, evades a tackle or two, and gains 10 yards here for the Panthers. A first and 10 coming up as they move the chains. The Panthers got into the Broncos territory at least once in that first half, but the Broncos did a terrific job of keeping that theme going of the season so far, which is bending and not breaking, making plays when it matters most. As Fayad runs right back. Oh, thought we were gonna have some luck with a fumbled option there, but a loss of four, which we will certainly take. Theron Coleman is flying all over the place for a corner. Second and 14 coming up after that big loss. Let's see if the Broncos can stifle this offense once again. Not been terrific usering Fayad. There's no secret there today. As a gain of about, what, eight? Looks like it's a nine-yard rush there for the Panthers. And a third and five coming up here. Makes it much more manageable for them. But I still have faith in this defense. I'm going to be usering Zaire Barnes here off the edge. Let's we'll see if we can get some pressure with him. Oh, it's going to be a halfback screen. Glad I used Zaire Barnes because he's right in the position but gets blocked. I hate that animation. But a fantastic tackle there. He's going to be stopped short. Another stop for this Broncos defense as they continue with their backs against the wall to make play after play. Sean Tyler is cold. I don't know how that happened, um, but all right. Probably from all the losses that he's taking. Um, but another fantastic effort by the defense here. Here come the Broncos offense in the first and 10. Jack Sherwin. A nice little gain there of 10 and a first down moving the chains. Caleb Ellaby so far, 11 of 17 for 124 passing yards and a touchdown. Looking nice today. Let's see if we can get Tyler going. The issue has been the blocking. There's no question in that. He's got the burst when he's got some space. As Again, what, what, is, what is the blocker doing there? 62 just ran right past him. I mean, I mean, just look at this. I literally stop. That's me juking backwards because I'm trying to let the lineman come pick up this guy. Because if I can cut back in the middle here, I'll have a lane. He just runs right past him. What are you doing? Is this Deathridge? Yeah. What are you doing? Just right, right past him. Who is supposed to be blocking this safety? I mean, this is ridiculous. That is a touchdown. That is a touchdown if he picks up that block. If the Broncos collapse and lose this game, I know this is a little bit of a gross exaggeration, but if the Broncos collapse and lose that game, go back and look at that run. Because that could have been a huge, huge nail in the coffin if we could have gotten something there. Corey Crooms does not know how to separate. And what is happening here with Caleb Elvey? I mean, I'll take it. Third and one coming up. A gain of seven. It's like he was getting stuck on his lineman at one point. Big third down right here. We're three for six so far. Can we get a push here and get this first down? Yes. People learned how to block for this one. We'll take that. It is a gain of what? Seven, eight? Something like that. And Sean Tyler is struggling so far. Eight rushes for 11 yards. That's 1.4 yards per carry. Not ideal. Hopefully we can get the Panthers to bite on this play action though because we've still been very committed to the run game even though we haven't had a ton of success. Uh, no separation from the receivers here. So Elby's just going to have to take that and scramble it himself. Gain of four yards. We'll take that. Not complaining. Elby's now got seven rushes for 57 yards. He is outgaining Sean Tyler handedly right now. But uh, let's see if Sean Tyler has something to say about it. Some blocking, please, guys. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. We need to strengthen this offensive line for sure. We need to get some run blockers on the recruiting path. It's very clear at this point. I know I keep saying that every third down is big, but it is big in a game like this when we're playing a team that is significantly better than us in most phases. But a big third and three coming up here for the Broncos. LB's trying to get... Oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Great coverage downfield. I was going to try to scramble, get around the pocket there. And maybe pick up a first down, but just could not do it. Looks like I got stuck on the lineman there. Yep. Good old getting your feet stuck on the offensive lineman. As we're going to have to punt it again. 
Looks like they're coming after this punt, too. Can I audible into a fake punt from here? No, I can't. That's unfortunate. Should be able to do that, but it's none of my business. We're punting. Let's see if we can pin them back again. Had some fair success the last time we tried to do so. And here it goes. Pretty deep. Oh, and it looks like it's going to go out of bounds at about the 8-yard line again. Mahalik having himself a game. For the second time this game, the Panthers are going to have to start from inside their 9-yard line. As we're setting some pressure here. We're going to try to make a play here. Theron Coleman, can you do something for me? Oh, and that might have been a mistake. It's a huge, gaping hole there for the Panthers. And a gain of 19 yards there. Pinned all the way back to now in business. After that huge gain, here come the Panthers again. They might just take this to the fourth quarter. I would if I was them. I don't know if they're going to, though. And they will. So with that, we're going into the fourth quarter up 13-0. We're pitching a shutout against an ACC team. I'm starting to think that this Broncos team is way ahead of schedule. Even though it seems like we've been dominating them as they get a jet sweep and blown up by the Broncos there. As much as it feels as though we've been dominating this game from wire to wire. If the Panthers score a touchdown here, they're within six. So every down still matters here. For sure. Big third and six coming up here as Andre Carter is going to come off the edge. Can he get some pressure? He got a little bit, but it wasn't enough. As the Panthers are going to get a first down here on a third and six. A gain of 16 yards. So far, Nick Patty has 53 passing yards. We have been absolutely suffocating this team as he's running. A designed quarterback run, it looks like. A gain of 8 yards. And a second and 2 coming up. Corvin Moment has 9 tackles on the day. Second and 2 coming up for the Panthers here. Addison motioning out of the backfield. Zaire Barnes forces a fumble. The ball's on the ground. Can they pick it up? Ryan Seelig is going after it. Did he get it? Did he stay in bounds? Did he get that? We have forced a turnover as we completely blow up the option. That's the second time that that has happened in two weeks. If you watch the San Jose State game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But what a massive play there by the Broncos. A huge turnover. As the Panthers now are in put up or shut up time, they need to stop us. So big first and 10 coming up after that huge turnover here. Broncos are going to stay relatively aggressive though as we find Borski here. First down, 13-yard reception. Borski's got to have close to 100 now. Oh, he's looking at three catches, 69 yards. We're closing in on five minutes left in this game, and the Broncos are in prime position to run it out if they can get a few more plays. As look, there was some blocking there, and we got some kind of gain. That's what happens when you know how to run block. 10 rushes for 20 yards, still looking at two yards per carry. A rough day so far for Sean Tyler, but the rest of the team, thankfully, has picked up the slack. Gonna try to get the ball here to Crooms, just try to see if he can make a play in the open field. Can he pick a block? Yeah, he can. And it is a first down here for the Broncos as they continue to move the chains. An eight-yard reception for Corey Crooms. That was his first catch of the day, actually. We're going for yet another pass here. Gonna look for Crooms here quickly. And he was open for half a second. Got nothing really out of it, though. Jack Sherwin stays in bounds, keeps milking that clock with a gain of four. Second and six coming up for the Broncos. Caleb Ellaby, 14 for 20 for 149 yards and a touchdown. I think I just saw a graphic a little bit ago, too, that we're outgaining them in terms of first downs. 15 to five right now. Utter domination for this Broncos team so far. As Ellaby, can you pick up a block? Picked up enough of one. It's a first down. A six-yard game for Caleb Ellaby, who has nine rushes for 57 yards now. And most importantly, it is a first and goal. As I think we're going to try to drop a designed run here for Sky Moore from the five-yard line. See if he can get some space and get six. Sky Moore. What a spin move to get back inside. Only got three yards out of it, though. That's fine. We'll take it. We will keep draining this clock. Second and goal here, out of the shotgun. Caleb Ellaby is going to scramble, and wow, that could have been disastrous. I thought I had made it past the line of scrimmage there, and I could dive with Caleb Ellaby. Clearly, I was still behind it, and he threw it. Um, luckily, it was just an incomplete pass. That could have been disastrous. And here comes the third and goal for the Broncos. We're going for yet another halfback toss here. Has not worked out for us yet, but you know what? That's fine. We're just trying to get some points. Any kind of points would do here. Sean Tyler, fantastic move. Juked out his defender, but could not quite make that extension. So it is a fourth and goal coming up from the half-yard line. Now, if I kick a field goal, it is still just a two-possession game. It would be 16 points, two touchdowns, and two two-point conversions would tie it up for the Panthers. 
If I QB sneak it and try to get a touchdown, it is a three possession game. And if I don't get anything, it's already still that two possession game. They're going to need to score two touchdowns anyway. And I trust my defense enough to force them to go 99 yards. So I've convinced myself officially into going for it right now from the half inch yard line. But what is the play call? It's a halfback toss. We've only got five seconds. We've got to run. We're going for it. Oh, we're going for it. We might have a look here. Can we snap it? No, we couldn't get it off. Oh, we couldn't get it off. Thought about it too long. And it's going to back us up. The decision still looms large, though. I've decided that we're going to come out at least in the formation to go for it with this triple option look right here. And if we don't like it, we'll audible out of it. But I don't hate it. I'm doing it. I'm going for it. We're doing it. Fourth and goal from the six yard line for the Broncos here. Potentially the game on the line. Ladarius Jefferson breaks a tackle, but cannot break another one. We're down at the one yard line. That is fine. Pittsburgh now has to go 99 yards in two minutes and 22 seconds. And it's still a two possession game. Let's see if the Broncos defense can capitalize. You gotta risk it for the biscuit as, whoa, that Pittsburgh coach weirdly looked like Pat Narduzzi, like very accurately so. But here we go, first and 10. First and 10 from actually about the two yard line here for the Panthers. Can we get a safety? That'd be cool. Ralph Holly's got his eyes on it. Nothing. Theron Coleman misses the tackle and it's a first and 10 and just like that, that excellent field position for us, pinning them back is completely washed out the window as a first and 10 and they are hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. It is crunch time. It is the two minute drive now. And it is a nice completion. AJ Thomas blows up the receiver there. But a gain of nine yards for the Panthers. I imagine they're going to continue going into hurry up. Or not. <laughs> they're not going for it, I guess. They hurried it up when the clock stopped for a first and ten. But they're now going slow for a second and one. Okay, whatever. That's fine. And second and one coming up here. I don't know why they didn't go hurry up there. But I'm not complaining. It's Corvin moment a terrific tackle gets some zero yards what are these play calls with the Panthers they got to get downfield and no stopping the clock either hey I cannot control the opponent's play calling decisions or clock management I can only control what the defense does let's see if I can do something about that defense huh I cannot clearly as there's Addison who if they've just been going to him all game would have had a much larger stat line than he has right now three wide here for the Panthers usering for Yad. Don't trust myself in coverage right now. For yeah, that's going to be roughing the passer. Did they call the flag? Yep, that's roughing the passer. That's on me. That is a huge, huge blunder. Should not have pressed that square button. That's solely on me. My eyes lit up. I thought I could get to the quarterback, force a sack, make a play maybe. Didn't end up happening. A first and 10, 15 yards in addition to the yards they gained there. And just like that, the Panthers are at the 45-yard line, and they still have three timeouts. Let's see if we can make a play here on his first and 10. Fayad, can he make up for it? Yes, he can. Fayad immediately comes back and sacks Nick Patty for a loss of eight yards. What a massive play there by Fayad, the anchor of this defense. And a second and 18 coming up here for the Panthers. They're hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. Get the snap off really quickly. This time it's Fisk there. Can he make a play? Deshaun Bustle got completely beat there. Wow. And a first and 10 after a gain of 38 yards. All of a sudden, the Panthers are in business. The Panthers actually took their first time out there. I do not agree with that call. If I was them, I would have saved it for the defense. I'm going to use your lovely here on the blitz. This is first and 10 coming up here for the Panthers. That might have been another roughing the passer, but it didn't matter. That is a touchdown to Sear Mack with the reception from Nick Patty. And the Panthers are an extra point away from being down only six with two timeouts left. And how big does that play call from the Broncos to go for it on fourth down look now? Pretty damn massive. I'm hoping to the football gods that I do not end up regretting that decision. But I might. And here come the Panthers for a massive onside kick here. The hands team secures it. It's Sam Bucci. And he gets it. Sam Bucci is Gucci with the hands as he recovers the onside kick. A massive, massive play there. And we now just need a first down ice this football game. No questions about it. It is now time to put on that conservative for both the big run and the tempo. 
cannot afford a fumble right now and definitely cannot afford a blunder with the clock management either. First look we're going to go for right here is just a power run with Tyler to the left. Haven't had a ton of luck with it today, but if we can pick up one or two blocks, we've had the space before. And there is one. And Sean Tyler makes a move. That's all we need. We just need one or two blocks, and Sean Tyler can take care of the rest of it. As we pick up a massive first down that should just about end it. The players look excited. Marcus Perez Brennan seems to know it. We are in position to go to 3-0. And just like that, after Pittsburgh used that other timeout, again, by the way, if they hadn't burned their last timeout on that offensive drive, they would still have a chance here. I would need to get one more first down, if I'm not mistaken. As I just took a delay of game. Just was not paying attention. Wow, that's uh, something that happens sometimes when you're commentating a game at the same time. I also forgot that I was in conservative tempo, so the play cock started at 10 there. Uh, but let me make sure I get that knee in this time with Ellaby. Um, and as I was saying a little bit ago, I think if Pittsburgh had not burnt their timeout on that last offensive drive, they actually would have had a chance. Okay, that is literally Pat Narduzzi. That's creeping me out. Did they scan his face into the game? That's a whole other thing. They used their last time out there. We can knee it right here, which will bring up a third and 20. Not ideal in any other circumstance, but very ideal for this one. And yes, doing my math now, if they had not used a timeout on that last offensive drive, they could have stopped the clock here one more time. We would need to get one more first down, but I'm not complaining. That was their mismanagement of the clock, and it is now a third and 20, another terrific third and distance. This is one that I'm very, very happy about. It's going to be a handoff to Sean Tyler just up the middle. I know there's risk in fumbling that, but I didn't want to go and find the clock management section and press the QB kneel again. So it's going to be a handoff to Sean Tyler. Look, boom. Nothing much past that. That's fine. And the Broncos are going to move to 3-0 and with a statement victory in Pittsburgh. And as you see, Caleb Ellaby, 149 yards, a touchdown, 53 carries. So that's 200 total yards and a touchdown for him. Just like they were able to do in real life. We go into Pittsburgh and beat the Pitt Panthers. Pretty much dominate wire to wire. And we are 3-0 and after three games. In this real life past season... The Broncos really did beat Pitt in Heinz Field, and they did beat San Jose State in their home opener, but they got thumped by Michigan. So now, remove that Michigan shellacking and call it a victory in Ann Arbor, who is now ranked, the Wolverines I should say, a victory in Heinz Field, a blowout over San Jose State to start the season, and these Broncos are halfway towards bowl eligibility just three games into the season. A terrific win for this program, as I wouldn't be shocked if the Broncos start getting top 25 buzz soon, this early, this is crazy. I seriously did not anticipate having this much early success, but that just accelerates the window for this program. I want us to win 10 games this season. We should be able to dominate the MAC, and I want us to get a pretty decent bowl game. I don't have national championship dreams this season. That would be extremely unrealistic. But based off the sample size from these first three games, we should dominate the Mid-American Conference. And we've got bigger goals than some ho-dunk bowl game. We want a New Year's Six Bowl. Why not us? Another thing that this early success is letting me know is it is honestly good for the interest of this series that Ellaby and Skymore will be moving on next year because these two are just dynamic. And next year, I just know they would be the best quarterback to receiver combo in the country. And while that would be really fun to play out, not having them and having to rebuild from scratch could be really, really interesting. And that's what I want for this series. So I'm honestly, you know, bittersweet about how awesome they've been to start the season but i think it'll be better for the long run of this series and at the end of the day we can't make excuses for victories we won and we're three and oh and that is something to be proud about for this program and granted we did not have to play kenny pickett this week so that was a huge bonus but to go into heinz field and beat a power five team is nothing to sneeze at and this broncos defense i've said it once and i'm gonna say it a million times they are tremendous. They come to play every week. They fly all over the football field and make a ton of TFLs. And I am so psyched for what this defense has in store for the next couple years as soon as we start filling some of those holes up a little bit. And the offense is getting there. Today was a slight setback from the San Jose State game, but we're starting to get those gears going. We're starting to get some more continuity. LLB had a very efficient game today and no interceptions. I think it's really only greener pastures ahead. And if we look real quick at some of these games around the country, Alabama hung 62 on number five, Texas A&M. Wow. So that game did not go how it went in real life. UTSA gets an impressive win over a Pac-12 team. Number eight, Oregon loses to Tennessee. 
Utah narrowly escapes Oregon State. Texas narrowly escapes BYU. And as for our actual game, and we pitched a shutout until two minutes left in the game, less than that even, and just utter domination. 17 to nine edge on first downs, 120 rushing yards compared to their 52, 149 to 145 passing yards, those were a little even. Not the brightest of numbers for either quarterback today. And then zero turnovers, which is huge. And we forced one from Pittsburgh, which was very, very timely. And we win the much coveted time of possession competition by seven minutes, which is also great. Ryan Seelig with a great fumble recovery and a tackle for loss as well. So he gets the player of the game, even though Corvin Moment was flying around, had at least 10 tackles. And Lovely made some fantastic tackle for losses as well. And then, of course, Elby, who I just talked about having a very efficient game, about 200 yards of total offense and a touchdown. Nick Patrick. He was fine. He was certainly no Kenny Pickett, and they could have used him today. But a win is a win, and the Broncos move to 3-0 and on the young season. As you can see this headline here, power outage. Defense helps Western Michigan overcome a lackluster offensive performance. That's awesome. But as for now, that is all I have for you. Our next opponent is Ohio, the Bobcats, in our MAC opener. But as for now, everybody, thank you again for checking out another video of the WMU Football Dynasty. One more reminder to give me a like, subscribe, Turn on that notification bell, whatever you may need. It all helps me out, so I appreciate you all. And until next time, go Broncos. Deuces. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, this is kind of groovy, though. Hey, hey. It was a dark and stormy night, but a bright and shiny day. The world is upside down and I'm feeling okay. Hey, hey.